All right, welcome everyone to today's webinar. It's good to be with you. Uh, my name is Ben Sutton. I'm a CPA and also a founder of Mizuma. Uh, started nine years ago trying to help small business owners all over the country. And uh, we're still just doing our best, trying to provide you a good service and good information to run your, your businesses off of, help you with the accounting and, and tax side of your business. So here today we are uh, going to provide an update on um, some of the latest COVID-19 developments and how that directly relates to your taxes and maybe your business and the ability for you to get uh, loans and, and other support uh, from the government. Um, and of course, you will have the ability to ask questions. Uh, you can use uh, the the icon down at the bottom of your the window you're you're looking at what is the button called q a button that uh, so you can put your questions through live and we'll get to those shortly uh, we're going to run an hour uh, and we'll answer as many questions as possible um, so uh, hang in there if your question doesn't get answered we'll we'll do our best to get to it and, and you can you can email it to us after the fact if if you if you if you'd like um, before I begin though I'm going to kind of go rogue a little bit from our my typical you know legislative update and everything and talk about the impact of COVID-19 on small businesses from more of a personal standpoint and and a, a you know real life standpoint um, I've got this quote hanging in my office here and as you can see it says only virtuous people are capable of freedom and that was spoken by the great Benjamin Franklin financial stress is has got to be one of the most difficult challenges that we can face as business owners as partners as spouses uh, in, in a marriage, any of our relationships can be greatly strained by financial stress. It's critical during these times that we don't lose perspective and lose that trust and support for one another. Right? We're, we're going through hell on the outside sometimes. And if we lose that trust, it's kind of like, you know, and get bitter on the inside and start uh forgetting to support and trust those closest to us close in our business or close in our family then we can really turn it into hell on the inside too and it it can cause the whole experience to be much worse on the other hand when the trial you know the challenge is over the question will be what did we do do, do we still have those relationships do we still have our integrity in place because if we get through with our integrity get through the, the you know these challenges are going to end we are going to get through it we are going to be on the other side of this looking back and if we can get through it with our integrity in place with our relationships in place we will find ourselves a lot happier and we'll find ourselves a lot better off in the long run regardless of what happens to our business um, you know, for people, for people of integrity, like small business owners mostly are, um, not meeting your financial obligations is not comfortable. And when the economy puts you in a, a position where you're unable to do that, or just natural events happening outside of your control, uh, it can be it can be really frustrating and and hard to deal with. Um, and it puts you in kind of this cash flow management situation that none of us really like to be in. However, some, like I say, sometimes we can't avoid it. So when, when we're in this uh, situation where resources, where we don't have the resources maybe to pay our obligations or to build our business the way we want to, again, be honest. Uh, don't lose your integrity. Communicate with the people you owe money to and that you're having to pay. And um, 
maintain your obligation to pay them when you can. Um, pay the most important people and ask for forg- not you know ask for patience of those that you just can't pay. And hopefully, if if we're all kind of understanding of the circumstances, it'll we'll all flex and get through it together. So anyway, there's just my couple words for you from a, a personal standpoint, from someone who's uh, in your shoes as a small business owner and is facing the same the same issues that you are. So on to our content of the day. Uh, the two loan programs that the government has instituted are still in place. The EIDL, Economic Injury Disaster Loan, is available still um, to apply for directly on the sba.gov website. It's a quick application. You have to put in your gross revenue, a few other items about your business, um, and, and, this, and submit that application right there online. Uh, one update to that uh, loan program is that the $10,000 advance that they had out there uh, now, which I don't know if that money is actually being distributed yet or not, but the idea was that you'd get a $10,000 advance. They're now changing that to be $1,000 per employee up to $10,000. So, so if you had five employees in your business, uh, you'll get a $5,000 advance instead of the $10,000. Again, that money is is meant to be kind of a grant and, and my understanding is that it's not have to be paid back. And that's, you know, everywhere that I've read, it's that $10,000, that advance money is supposed to come within three days of filing the application online. I don't, I don't know if anyone has received that money yet. I'd be interested to hear if, if you have, um, but that particular loan program, that $10,000 advance, uh, is in place, but I, I don't know how quickly that money is getting out to us. The other uh, big program that we've talked a lot about and that I want to give you a, just a reminder and update on is the PPP loan program, the Paycheck Protection Program. Uh, so far, uh, there have been over a billion loans approved, supposedly, and, and $247 billion uh, in approved loans. That's pretty remarkable when you consider the fact that program only began, you know, two weeks ago. But supposedly the money is is being processed. The banks are uh, approving them. Um, I doubt that much money has actually been distributed yet, but uh, the SBA says that's how much has been approved. One nice thing that I saw on the statistics of, of that money that's been issued is that over 70% of the loan money that has been issued has been issued in amounts under $150,000, which tells me it's it's going towards the small small businesses like they like they wanted it to. So uh, again, the money is going out. If you haven't applied for that loan yet, you still can. the The PPP loan is applied for at your local bank or credit union that is SBA certified, right? So they will underwrite you and process your loan application and uh, give you the loan right there at the local level. This is not something that the SBA, uh, you know, national agency is, is doing for you. It's your local bank. So if you haven't applied for that yet, definitely do, because that loan uh, is set up to be forgiven. If you if you use the funds for payroll, rent, and utilities, so that that is a major benefit with this PPP program that really no one who's been affected by COVID nineteen should miss. And so I'd encourage you to get out there and apply for this loan if you've been affected by the coronavirus in your business. And it's really frankly hard to imagine anybody who hasn't. Um, that, as I mentioned, that loan is forgiven, or uh, is forgiven if you use it on payroll, rent, and utilities. When that loan is forgiven, the 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 forgiveness is not taxable to you. So this loan that you receive, and if if the money's forgiven, you will not be taxed on that money at all. It will it's, it's 
basically turns into a grant that you are not taxed on. All right. Um, some of the other key elements of the stimulus program that I'll mention before we get into your questions. Uh, there's a lot of changes to taxes that have, uh, but a lot of them don't really matter to many people. Uh, they're kind of small and kind of on the fringes as far as who they apply to. But uh, there are some, some big ones. And one of them that I wanted to mention is the loss carryback uh, that is, has been uh, put into law. So any losses that you incurred in 2018 or 2019, as well as net operating losses that you incur in 2020, will be available for carryback to taxes up to five years ago. So you can, if any losses that you incur in 2020, which I imagine they'll be significant, we can carry those back. You know, your tax preparers, Mizuma, we can carry those back to tax returns up to five years ago, where maybe you paid taxes and recover some of that tax money for you. So uh, that's, that's a, a good one to know about and to take advantage of. Um, another one is the payroll tax credit or payroll tax deferral program. Um, basically, if your industry or your business was shut down uh, by government mandate, right, or, or s severely limited in operating because of the mandates that the government put out there, then you're eligible for this employee retention credit. Which basically is fifty percent, or sorry, uh, yeah, the a social FICA taxes basically that you pay on payroll. You'll be able to get as a refundable tax credit at the end of this year if you continue paying employees during this time. Um, there are a couple catches to this. Uh, you have to demonstrate that your gross revenue went down by at least 50% uh, compared to the prior quarters. And um, so, and, and that's really the main one. And like I said, your, your business has to have been directly affected by the government telling you to, to stop. Um, another one is you're able, these same, same businesses, if you're continuing to pay employees, uh, you're able to defer the payment of Social Security and Medicare and not pay it altogether right now, uh, but you will have to pay it back um, over the next couple of years. So whether or not you, you feel like that's a good, good plan for you is probably up to you. Um, but, you know, if it means staying in business, then being able to defer those, those FICA taxes will be really valuable. All right, so uh, those are the two uh, two loan programs and then a couple of the, the tax items that I wanted to cover before getting into your questions. I'd really like to spend most of the time on your questions to make sure those of us here uh, get the most out of this, this time we spend with the webinar. So let's see, can we get to our first question here? Oh, so the first one is, can you explain how the Section 2301 Employee Retention Credit works and if it can be paired with the PPP loans? I don't see anything that would prevent that tax credit from being paired with the PPP loans. Uh, to get into that, just to go over that real quickly again, the Employee Retention Credit, Section 2301, um, is for private employers. You're allowed a refundable tax credit against any social security tax that you pay equal to 50% of the wages that you pay uh, for your employees. Um, and you can get up to $10,000 per employee. Uh, and again, your, your operation has to have been uh, fully or partially suspended due to orders from the government. Um, and, uh, or, you have to have experienced 50% decline in gross revenue. Okay, I might have said that differently earlier, uh, but it's either 
you you were suspended because the government told you to, or you experienced a 50% decline in gross revenue uh, when you compare it to the same quarter of the prior year. Um, it's for available for large and small companies, uh, but it's going to be taken essentially, it appears to me it's going to be taken when your tax return is filed here at the end of the year. So it's going to be a tax credit uh, that you get when you file your 2020 tax return next year. So I hope that answers that question for you. Next one, when calculating monthly salary for the PPP loan, should we include any amounts the company contributed to a SEP retirement plan for the employee? What if the, that amount was deposited into the SEP in 2020 as a contribution for 2019 since the SEP allows you to contribute until the tax deadline? That's a great uh, question. Um, I do know that uh, payments of retirement benefits are included in, in the payroll calculation, the monthly average payroll calculation. So yes, SEP contributions should be in, included in that calculation. Uh, I would think, as a result, you would in, you would include contributions that were paid in 2020. It's it's part of their compensation from last year. Uh, you're obligated to make those contributions, so I don't see why the banks would exclude that. So I would include them. Um, the bank, you know, might give you other information, but you're gonna you're just gonna need to be able to support whatever number you provide. So be ready to explain that to the bank when you submit your application. Next question, section 2303 modifications for net operating losses. If our S Corp has a net operating loss from quarter one of 2020, can we carry the back fees to the 2019 year and reduce our tax liability from last year or 2017? Um, so my understanding of the way this works is that it's done a year at a time. So you will not be able to take, you know, it's, it's based on a tax return net operating loss. So when, when we file your 2020 tax return, if that full year has a net operating loss, we can carry that back to up to five years. So we can go 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, but not, we can't just look at quarter, you know, quarter by quarter. So we got to prepare the tax return first then carry back anything that we have to carry back. Okay, next one. I recently launched a small business. The business has only accumulated expenses and has not had the opportunity to generate sales yet. Am I entitled to the small business loan to help offset costs during COVID-19 pressures? This loan would help cash flow as I'm also away from my full-time job. Um, the PPP loan I know is available for businesses, at least in the guidance that I have, that were formed February 15th or prior. The EIDL loan, the, the one that you can apply for directly on the SBA.gov website, does not have that same restriction that I'm, as far as I'm aware. So you could go ahead and apply there. My guess though is that if you don't have revenue that is being lost, then your chances of getting a loan there are probably slim. Uh, your, the unemployment that hopefully you're getting from your, your full-time job is, is probably the best uh, stimulus and support that you're going to you're get uh, immediately. It never hurts to apply. So uh, while the PPP loan may not be available, it doesn't hurt to apply for the EIDL loan directly on uh, SBA.gov. Next question, our company pays for the employee health insurance premiums directly. ADP was not reporting it monthly. The amount we paid shows up in the employee's W-2, grossed up wages, box 14. If we include those health insurance costs in the payroll cost portion of the PPP application, how do we give proof that we are continuing to pay those for employees since we can't show payroll reports to prove that? Yes, yeah, so hopefully you can uh, prove it as far as calculating the loan amount, you can go back and prove it based on the W-2 that shows it reported there. Proving it going forward, uh, you know, it sounds like these are S-Corp insurance premiums. 
And so um, I don't see why you couldn't prove it by, sh by showing the bank that you're paying for that. You're paying those premiums. Uh, maybe you're not putting it on the check or pay stub every month, but you could show a report showing that the premiums are being paid uh, even out of your personal account because um, you, you can pay those premiums out of your personal account or the business account. Um, so I would, I would expect the bank to, to accept record of payment of those premiums um, as support for the forgiveness uh, solution for that. So that's my best, my best thought there for you. Next one, my company incorporated on March 2nd, 2020 and started business on March 15th. Am I eligible for any fund loan or any financial relief? Uh, as I mentioned just previously, a couple of questions ago, try the EIDL loan, probably not eligible for the PPP loan. Next one, I read that you cannot get PPP if you get unemployment. Is that true? I believe that is true. So you're, you're really, uh, you're either, getting the PPP loan. Well, I, I, I take that back. You might be able to get a PPP loan and get unemployment, but uh, the PPP loan most likely would not be forgivable if you are getting unemployment. Really, the two worlds, unemployment, PPP loan, uh, aren't talking to each other. And as far as I'm, you know, and don't know what's going on with the other. Um, and as far as I recall on the PPP loan application, I'm not aware of anywhere where it requires you to disclose unemployment that you're receiving. Um, so uh, it, it makes sense that you don't want to double dip. I think the, the idea is, is that we're not double dipping in the government programs, but um, it wouldn't surprise me if you could get both. Uh, but I wouldn't expect the PPP loan to be forgivable if you were getting unemployment. Next one, it has been over a week since we applied and we have not received any money. Yeah, I think that's, um, that is common uh, to, to most businesses out there. You know, we've all applied, we've all maybe talked to the bank or we've all done the, you know, the SBA.gov application and haven't seen any money yet. I, you know, that's, my guess is that the government is in over their heads and didn't realize how many applications they were going to get. And they're still trying to determine how to get this money out to us. Hopefully it comes soon. I haven't received EIDL advance yet. I have seen posts on social media of some who got it yesterday, including sole proprietors who got 1,000. Hey, that's, that's great news. I'm glad to hear that. Um, I haven't, that's the first I've heard of someone getting the EIDL advance. I know people yesterday uh, started receiving their stimulus checks. Um, they, you know, the, the $1,200, um, I know those started coming out yesterday. Uh, but uh, the, the EIDL advance, this is the first I've heard of it. So I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Okay, next question. Uh, looks like that was maybe a I haven't received EIDL advance. Oh, here we go. What if I only started my LLC company in January 2020? Will I be qualified for that SBA loan? I tried to fill out the form, but I don't have my company last year for annual expenses or annual income. Uh, you should be qualified to apply. Um, like I said earlier, yeah, I don't know what they're going to do if you don't have revenue or expenses to report. Um, I'd like to think that they can still recognize the fact that new small business owners were, you know, just push shoving off from their full-time job maybe, and were, were investing everything they have into this new business that they're starting. And then the government comes out and uh, shuts everything down. I'd like, you know, legislation does not inc incorporate, um, all scenarios, unfortunately. So I, I hope that there's a place for you to get relief from that. But I, I, they're not coming out and telling us either way. Next one, can you explain about pandemic unemployment assistance for business businesses doing gig shows? Um, so un, the, the federal government did instate a new rule that is supposed to allow uh, 
sole proprietors and independent contractors, uh, you know, self-employed individuals to get unemployment assistance. Um, so that's new. Typically, self-employed business owners were not able to get unemployment um, because you know we could all just fire ourselves and get on unemployment, right? But the obviously under these current circumstances, the government decided to make a a concession and, and open that up for the self-employed individuals, even sole proprietors who aren't aren't on their own payroll. And so uh, that is a new thing that's available now. Um, however, I've heard some states are balking at, at actually instituting it. And so, um, you know, in fact, my own state said, you know, there was, we, we asked them what they're doing and they said, we're not sure. Uh, if we're when a self-employed person or a sole proprietor applies for unemployment, if we're going to give it to them, our, our state legislature was still grappling with it. But that's what that's what that difference is: is that self-employed people now can file for unemployment. Okay, next question: I was mandated to close, and I let go of my employees besides myself. If my employees do not want to return, and I am the only employee, will the PP loan be available to me to pay rent and other expenses? It will, um, and to pay your own your own payroll. Um, the the idea behind forgiving the loan is that uh, at least uh, the, the, well, that seventy five percent of the loan is going to be used for payroll, and that twenty five percent would be used for rent and utilities. Um, so. Uh, that might eat into that issue. You, you're still uh, eligible to get the loan, um, but whether or not it's all going to be forgiven um, depends on where you spend the money. So, if you're spending uh, at least seventy-five, you know, seventy-five percent of it on on payroll, and the rest on rent and utilities, uh, then it, it will be forgiven. If you're not spending it on that, then you'll just have to pay it back. It's only a half half a percent interest rate on this PPP loan, and payments are deferred for six months. So um, it would still probably be beneficial to, to get the loan. Next one. If you have an employee leaving, uh, the, leaving the company, but you were to hire a new employee to replace that person right away, would the PPP loan forgiveness portion still apply to me? Yes, I believe it, it would. So. Um, you know, it's not it's not in your control necessarily if someone decides to leave. They just want to see. Um, they just they're just going to be looking at payroll records before and after the fact, right? They've got your payroll records from before when you applied, and now after um, you get the loan, they're going to look at what your payroll records were afterwards and where you spent the money. It's, and they're not going to look at who you paid necessarily. They're going to look at how many people you paid and how much you paid in payroll to determine the forgiveness amount. Next one, I applied for the EIDL loan and I have read conflicting information regarding if it is a loan or if it will be treated as a grant. With the $1,000 you mentioned per employee up to 10,000, is that treated as a grant will not have to be paid back? I'm the only employee and owner that I'd be eligible to receive the $1,000. Uh, so I think the reason why it may be confusing or conflicting is that the EIDL loan is not a grant, but this upfront advance money that they're offering, the $1,000 per employee, is like a grant, is, I believe, meant to not be paid back. Uh, so there's two elements of the loan. There's the actual loan, which could be much larger than $1,000 per employee, and then there's the advance, which is $1,000 per employee. I think you would still be eligible to receive that $1,000 even if you're the only employee and owner of the company. Uh, it went on and said, my friend who has 10 employees received $10,000 check on Friday. That's awesome. Uh, if I'm the only owner of the LLC, don't take a salary, can I apply for unemployment? Hope I covered that um, earlier. Yes, I understand the federal government is, is asking the states to cover self-employed individuals. Um, all right, I think we've, oh, uh, and a little piece in here, the EIDL loan is not forgivable. 
So that's that's more like a traditional SBA loan, similar terms, you know, like a 5% interest rate over uh, 10 years, um, but it is not forgivable. If you're a sole proprietor and have no employees, how do you calculate the PPP loan or your payroll amount? What supporting documents would a sole proprietor need to have need to send with the application? It's a great question. So sole proprietors can apply for the PPP loan and you use your net profit, uh, the net profit of your business as the payroll amount. So you take, you know, and you get that net profit number from a, a couple different sources. Your income statement, like Mazuma is preparing for our clients, we're, you know, we're reconciling your bank statements every month and, and doing your bookkeeping. And a byproduct of that is your financial statements. And one of those is the, the income statement. Um, that income statement shows your gross income, gross revenue, minus your expenses, and gets your net profit. And that, that net profit number uh, would be your, you know, you take the, the average net profit over a, a number of months, multiply that by two and a half to get your, your PPP loan amount. Uh, so that, an, an income statement, uh, you, last year's tax return, Schedule C, also contains that net profit information. And so that would be the documentation that you're looking to provide the bank. Can a business get funding from all three simultaneously? EIDL, PPP, and employee retention. You can get EIDL, you can get PPP at the same time. Um, employee retention is not a funding, um, is not a funding program. It's a tax credit. So I imagine you will be able to get the tax credit still. I don't see anything that <clears throat> prohibits you from that. Um, so yes, I believe so. Will every uh, will every one of every income bracket in 2019 receive the extra $600 to be added weekly to the weekly unemployment benefits? Uh, I I I don't know if they're looking at income thresholds on that uh, extra $600, but that is referring to the federal government's kind of kicking in an extra $600. Uh, for the state unemployment benefit. Um, I'm not sure, you know, that's a state by state unemployment law thing. I told you my state uh, is still up in the air on, on what they're doing with it. Um, and I, I think it is a state, like the state has to agree to partner with the government to, uh, to do that. Um, and I, in your state, California, I think they have partnered to do the $600, but I don't know if it applies to every tax bracket, so sorry about that. Uh, next one, I've had a sole proprietor consulting side business since 2012, but only reinitiated it in March of 2020 after becoming unemployed. And I just started an LLC for the consulting business. Should I apply for the PPP loan under LLC or not? Since the LLC was just uh, started in March 2020, or, or just recently started, um, I, I don't think I don't think you're going to be able to apply for PPP under that. Remember, PPP has that February 15th deadline. So uh, if the business, if you weren't doing business prior to February 15th, then I don't think PPP is available to you. If you're a sole proprietor, you know, operating as a sole proprietor prior to, to February 15th, then you certainly could still apply. Next one, loan amounts will be forgiven as long as the loan proceeds are used to cover payroll costs, mortgage. Yeah, and over an eight-week period. Okay, that's right. So, so but that's uh, loan amounts are forgiven in the PPP loan, not the EIDL loan. Just want to make that clear. Um, and it's right. The costs have to be incurred in the eight-week period after the loan is, is issued. Next one, if you have not filed your 2019 taxes yet, can you still apply for the PPP plan? I understand they use 2019 taxes as verification. Also, if your payroll is higher in 2020, how do you account for this? So uh, the, the main uh, supporting documentation when, when filing for a PPP loan is payroll records. 
unless you're a sole proprietor without any employees, right? Then you've got your sole, your income statement for your business and your Schedule C from last year's taxes. So if you don't have last year's taxes done and you're a sole proprietor and don't have any employees, then you can use your income statement still as documentation for that. Um, so I don't, I don't see not having 2019 taxes filed as being a major uh, problem for the PPP loan application. They're looking at payroll records. So you've got, again, if you're not a sole proprietor, you should have payroll records that document how much you have spent on payroll. If your payroll is higher in 2020, uh, they, they have allowed, I've seen stipulations that allow you to use your first quarter payroll records for determining your average. So the default is going back to 2019 to determine your average payroll, but they have, they do, I've seen provision that allows seasonal employers or maybe people who more recently had a significant payroll going on to use January, February, March uh, to determine what their average payroll was. With the next one, with the EIDL loan, can I just take a thousand dollar advance and not a larger loan? Yeah, I think you can. Um, let's see, I was told that we have until June 30th, 2020 to re restore the full-time employment for any changes made between February 15th and April 26th. So does that mean that the employee compensation levels do not have to be maintained between February 15th and April 26th? Uh, yes, I believe so. Um, so if you what they want to see for forgiving the loan is they want to see you maintain um, <clears throat> payroll levels. Um, so you can take a dip, but then you can rehire um, and restore those, those payroll levels and those employee le account levels and still get forgiveness of the loan. All right, next one. If you're self-employed and have multiple businesses that use the same S, uh, social security number, can you submit multiple EIDL? Will submitting more than one application cause any issues or confusion? Uh, I think in that case, if, you're, if they're all under your social security number, uh, I would imagine you should just be combining them all on one EIDL application. Because, yeah, I think it would confuse things if you're submitting multiple applications for different businesses that don't have a different tax ID number. So uh, I would recommend filing one application, kind of combi combining all of your business activity into one application in that case. I heard that there will be 12 months before you have to start making payments on the EIDL. Uh, I think I thought it was six months on the EIDL, um, but I know it's I know it's not right away, I, and it's it is six months, I believe, on the PPP loan as well. So sorry if I missed that detail, but yeah. Can you advise on taking unemployment when you're when you own your own company? Is the rule that once the company generates revenue, you must cancel unemployment? Uh, yes, that as soon as you're able to compensate yourself again, you should be canceling the unemployment. I believe that is the rule. Next one, I paid cash to my employees in the month of January and February. Can I still qualify to get the PPP? Uh, if, if you can provide documentation to the bank, then yes. Uh, you know, so that decision is made at the local bank level. So really it's about maybe walking into a credit union or, or a bank you have a relationship with and explaining to them and then providing them whatever support you can to, to show those payments were made. But if you paid employees, uh, then you should qualify. For sole proprietor filing Schedule C, will mortgage payment for the business building count as rent to be forgiven under PPP? So mortgage payments are... Uh, counted counted like rent if the mortgage payment is for the business building. 
Yes, so uh, I believe you do get that forgiven. I have a, next one. I've exhausted my unemployment benefits in 2019 and started my LLC in March 2020. Should I apply for unemployment under the LLC or reopen my prior claim? I would probably suggest reopening your prior claim at this moment, at this time. Um, Especially if your business is brand new and maybe you haven't been compensating yourself as highly as you were bef getting before from your prior job. Um, so I would, but you know, that's my best guess at that scenario. If I'm a single member LLC, should I set up payroll for myself to get PPP? No, um, not unless you make the S Corp election as a single member LLC. Don't put yourself on payroll if you're not taxed as an S-Corp. Next one, can I amend my 2019 taxes to accommodate for NOLs? Yes, you can. Um, however, these NOLs are carried back. So um, if you have, if you have uh, there's no reason yet to amend your 2019 return right now. But when you, when you prepare your 2020 return, you may want to amend your 2019. But really, anything prior, so if you incurred a loss in 2019, then you're going to go back and carry that loss back to prior years. So you'd amend your 2018 or 17 or 16 return. All right. Okay, next one. Some government documents say to include payments made to independent contractors as part of the wage calculation. Others say not to, which is correct. Uh, you are not supposed to include payments to independent contractors in the payroll calculation. Okay, and the, and the reason being is that those independent contractors are meant to go out and apply for their own PPP loan. All right, so you get, uh, you get the loan uh, in order to keep your employees employed. Individual business owners get the loan to keep themselves in business. Does that make sense? So uh, you do not include in payments to independent contractors as part of wages. All right. I think. We're getting to the end here. If there's no last minute, it looks like we might have some others rolling in. Um, feel free to get those last questions in here. These loans, guys, it's unprecedented that this type of these loans that are coming out, you know, these loans are going to be forgiven. Not even going to be taxable. Uh, they can they can make the difference between whether you're staying in business or not. Um, so don't hesitate to take advantage of these. the the You know the program is supposed to be open until June 30th. I'm sure the money is going to be on long before that. So get in with a bank. Some of these smaller banks, credit unions, you know might be your best option. I've, you know, Wells Fargo and other large banks basically have shut their doors to this program. It was one day they opened their application process and then they closed it because they got so much, so many applications. Um, so don't hesitate on this. Get into a credit union somewhere and, and apply if, if your business is affected by the circumstances. Okay, let's get on with a few more questions. I elected my LLC company to be an S Corp. Was it advisable to have a payroll company or should I manage my own payroll whenever I want it? Uh, I advise to have a payroll company. You know, there's, there's payroll processors now that are very affordable out there. You know, especially if you're the only one on payroll, you can get it for less than 50 bucks a month. Uh, it's just worth having a, a payroll company take care of the taxes for you. There's, there's, uh, 
no faster way to get in trouble in taxes than with payroll taxes. That comes fast and it comes biting hard with penalties. So I would, you know, even myself, you know, as one who has processed payroll for hundreds of clients before and, and knows the ins and outs of doing it, I, I, I'm quick to hire a company to take care of it for me because for my own business, because it's just, it's just not worth the headache and the risk. Next one. Uh, I own an S corp and I'm the only employee. Can you clarify if my salary calculation should be my W two gross wages divided by 12 multiplied by 2.5 or should I take my net profits, which is my salary plus the pass through profit and divide that. This is a great question that's come up repeatedly. And honestly, I think banks are doing it differently. Um, I would, the cleanest way to get this loan through is, is going to be just going with your W-2 wage. I know that doesn't cover everything, but putting your, using just your W-2 wage on the application and then adding your payroll reports and documents to support that calculation is going to look the best from a bank's standpoint, All right? If they're having to evaluate an income statement to determine your distributions, whether you added the correct amount of distributions, then that's going to slow the process down. So if you've got a relationship with somebody at a bank, I would ask them if you can include your owner's distributions from your S Corp. Um, if you, otherwise, I'd probably just submit it with the W-2 only just to, in, in hopes to grease the skids and get it through the system faster. All right, that's, that would be my advice there. I recently, next one, I recently launched a small business. The business has only accumulated expenses, not had the opportunity to generate sales. Am I entitled to small business loan to help offset the costs during COVID-19? This loan would help cash flows. On, oh, I think we talked about this one previously, but, um, you're not likely to get much of a loan if your business has not generated any significant income yet. Um, the PPP loan certainly won't be available. Uh, the EIDL loan on the on SBA.gov um, may may be available. Uh, so if anything, you can apply at SBA.gov for the EIDL loan. Next question: Is the five-year carryback Loss also applied to single member LLCs formed later in 2019. Basically claim losses of an LLC on personal taxes in prior years. I don't see anything that, that uh, would prevent that. So yeah, I think it, as far as what I've read, there's no limitation um, there. So, but just be aware that your 2020 loss um, is going to first reduce all of your other income, right? So if you have a W-2 job in 2020, uh, then say you're making $50,000 at your W-2 and your new LLC shows a loss of 20,000, then that 20,000 is going to reduce your $50,000 wage and, and taxable income that way. And then if it wipes out all of your other income and pushes you into a net loss, uh, then that remaining can, can go and be carried back. Next one. Um, should PPP wages calculation include pass-through profits? I think I, from an S-Corp, just addressed that. Hopefully you heard my response there. I just got approved for a PPP. Congratulations. That's awesome. But all of my employees have gone on unemployment. Should I take the loan? That's a good question. Um, if you can pay it back, then yeah, I would. Um, you know, if you're if you're planning on hiring employees now that you've got the loan, uh, then any you know you you have an opportunity now to hire employees and to start paying them. 
and any money that you do pay them in the next two months is going to be forgiven. Uh, I, I imagine that that it seems like that would be a good route to go. Um, if you think you're going to blow the money and not be able to pay it back, uh, then don't. But <clears throat> but otherwise, I would say it's, it's half a percent interest. Um, so you can't get money for a better a better deal than that. Next question, I filed as an LLC in California, husband and wife are 50-50 owners. IRS has the LLC recorded as a single member LLC that I verified by phone call several months ago. Do I file the PPP for the LLC with two members or file a single member LLC, me, and also separately as a sole proprietor for my husband? Um, I would suggest, let's see, I would suggest getting it straightened out um, with California or the IRS so that they're both viewing you the same. Um, maybe the best way to do that is to, when you file your tax return. But I would probably just go in to the PPP loan as an LLC. Uh, but you don't have any payroll yet, right? So it's just the profits. If I'm interpreting the question correctly, it's the profits that you're um, going to claim on the PPP loan application. So I would file as one business because you only have one EIN number. Um, so file as one business, the LLC, and use the net, the net profit uh, as the average payroll number. If you have employees, if I'm interpreting the question wrong, and you have employees, then you're just going to file under the one business and use your payroll number as, as you're on the application. Okay, next one. If we are an S-Corp and forgot to put ourselves on the EIDL, should we reapply? Uh, S Corp and forgot to put ourselves on EIDL. Should we reapply? Yeah, if you if you didn't put yourselves down as the owners of the S Corp, then you should reapply there. As a real estate consultant, I have revenue but minimal to no costs of goods sold. Can I still qualify for the EIDL if it's an S Corp? Yeah, that cost of goods sold number, uh, you know, it's kind of a confusing one because service-based businesses may not have cost of goods sold, that doesn't disqualify them from the EIDL loan. So you can, um, you can still apply for the EIDL and get the loan, even if you don't have cost of goods sold. Uh, you could consider as a service business uh, in general, maybe this doesn't work for you as a real estate uh, person, a realtor, but any cost of services involved in delivering the service could be put on that cost of goods sold number as well. Next one, I put the wrong direct deposit in the taxpayer account and stimulus check for COVID-19 was sent to the wrong account. How do I solve the issue? Shoot. Um, that's a really good question. Uh, you know, the IRS is basically closed as far as they're not answering phones, um, they're not processing paper tax returns. Uh, I would I would search on the, the IRS website for maybe some information about how to handle that. Um, just so if you're not aware yet, the IRS has come out with this uh, application online that you can get on your, your phone or um, by going there online where if you did not put in a direct deposit information into last year's tax return, uh, then by default, the IRS will be mailing you a check, right? And, and that, of course, takes longer. Uh, so they've created this application online where you can go on there and input your direct deposit bank account and routing number uh, so that the IRS will 
uh, direct deposit your stimulus check into your account instead of mailing it to you. I really I feel terrible about you putting the, the wrong information there. I, I don't have a solid solution on how to resolve that. When people's tax refunds get put into the wrong account, which hap I've seen happen a couple times, it's a bear to, to get that fixed, but it takes phone calls with the IRS, and, and they're not open for phone calls as far as I'm aware, unless there's a number or something on that site. Next one, to piggyback off the payroll question, I also started an LLC and am now taxed as an S-Corp. How often would you advise a new business to pay themselves? It's my first year in business and I'm not sure how much to pay myself because I don't know how much money my company will generate. So starting out in your first year with yourself on payroll, you want to keep your payroll low at the beginning. I would pay yourself the minimum as infrequently as your payroll processor will let you, but I would say at least monthly. Okay, because a lot of times there's monthly payroll, sometimes there's monthly payroll tax filings that are required. So I would, I would uh, start out minimal payroll. Uh, so you're paying as little FICA taxes as possible and you're not um, risking, uh, you know, putting your account in the negative by paying yourself, which you'd never want to do. And then over the months, so for the first six months, you know, maybe a hundred bucks or five hundred dollars per month is your payroll. Um, and then after six months, see how things are going. Then adjust it up to to make sure you meet that reasonable compensation threshold that the IRS has. Hope that helps you. Next one. Uh, yes, our this webinar will be available for attendees and will be. Uh, posted, I think, on YouTube, and the link will be sent out. May I apply for the EIDL in two different LLCs? Yes, it's entity specific, I believe, so you can apply for uh, any entity that you own, and, and even if you own more than one. Next one, do I need to apply for the Section 2301 Employee Retention Credit now, or simply work with Mazuma at the end of the year to claim this as a credit? Uh, how do we show provide 50% decline in revenue from the Q1 2020 versus Q1 2019? We've been paying employees the same amount, no drop off, but the income has dropped by more than 50%. Does bookkeeping suffice to prove this? I think, uh, so yeah, there's no um, application that I'm aware of. This is a tax refund that's going to be uh, tax credit that's going to be applied for on your tax return. So the IRS doesn't even have the forms uh, for this yet. Um, and so I, I imagine, you know, I don't know if they're just going to ask for certification that you uh, had that loss or, or that your, you know, your revenue dropped, or um, we, we could just provide the bookkeeping reports to show that. Uh, it's a good question. They haven't thought all the way through this yet. They're going to be developing and finalizing that before the end of the year. Sometimes they don't develop, they don't finalize tax law until literally days or weeks before the end of the year. That applies retroactively. So with these kind of emergency situation, I would I would expect that it's going to be that kind of scenario. Um, maybe it was. Related to that, uh, okay, next question. I filed jointly with my husband with social security numbers. We have rental properties with one commercial space that's not paying. Should we apply for the EIDL once or twice? I would say you apply once uh, for in that scenario. Like I say, um, each business entity is supposed to be able to apply individually. If an officer owns two separate businesses, both businesses can apply for the PPP and the EIDL. Yes, my understanding in that case, the answer would be yes. All right, well, it's time to cut it off. We're, we're at our hour. Um, thank you everyone for those great questions. I hope it provides context and, and guidance and direction. These are uncertain times, you know, where we don't have all the answers. 
Um, but I hope we're able to, to give you what information we can to give you to give you kind of that next step and that next direction to go. Here at Mizuma, we're always happy to help with bookkeeping and tax returns, right? That's what we do. Um, let us know if you need any information from us in order to, to file your applications or if you have questions. Uh, we'll continue with our webinars. Um, and of course, this webinar will be posted on our, on our uh, social media pages. Um, and we hope uh, you stick with us for our next webinar. It'll be in, in middle of May. Uh, of course, clients get webinars more frequently, so we'll be doing another Q&A webinar uh, in a couple weeks, I believe. Good luck to everyone, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.